Awesome as that song says, it's by the grace of God and the mercy of the Lord Jesus Christ, who through um, his walk in Gethsemane, through that great trial of saying, if it's possible, let this cup pass from me, said, nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. And by the grace of God this morning, we have the blessing of knowing he went to the cross and took our place. I praise God this morning, recognize that by his grace, he's allowed us Christ. That was our place said the soul that sinned it it shall die and that promise was given that we look forward to necessarily but it is a promise of God and by the grace of the Lord he gives us his knowing that by his word and for his namesake he's given us the blessing of the Lord to realize he took our place at the cross and by his grace we've now been saved so that we don't have to worry about that penalty of sin we're glad that you're here this morning pray that God will bless you and encourage you in the service and we'd like to pray for this is the book of this is chapter number one following along here we're going to read the whole chapter actually in our um, Bible app this morning saving pray that God will bless and encourage you if you're watching uh, we ask it in Jesus name that you'll be blessed this morning and encouraged in the name of the Lord knowing that that is his desire all you to realize be his own and it's a, his desire that he adopts you into his family and takes care of you like no one else can praise god for it this morning <clears throat> praise in jesus name that you will be able to receive that <clears throat> in this morning <clears throat> that frog just doesn't want to go away genesis chapter number one starting with verse number one this is in king james version this morning I ask you to follow along with us as we read this and receive from the lord this morning what he has for us genesis chapter one verse number one it's chapter one in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. God said, Let there be light, and there was light, and God saw the light, that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness. The light day and the darkness he called night, and the evening and the morning were the first day. And God said, Let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament, and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament. And it was so. And God called the firmament heaven. And the evening and the morning were the second day. And God said, Let the waters under the heaven be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. And God called the dry land earth, and the gathering together of the waters called he seas. And God saw that it was good. And God said, let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth. And it was so. And the earth brought forth grass, and herb yielding seed after his kind, and the tree yielding fruit, whose seed was in itself after his kind. And God saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning were the third day. And God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night. And let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. And it was so. And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day, and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also, and God set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth, and to rule over the day and over the night, and to divide the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good, and the evening and the morning were the fourth day. And God said, let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that hath life, and fowl that it may fly above the earth in the open firmament of heaven. 
And God created great whales, and every living creature that moveth, which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind, and every winged fowl after his kind. And God saw that it was good. And God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters in the seas, and let fowl multiply in the earth. And the evening and the morning were the fifth day. And God said, Let the earth bring forth the living creature after his kind, cattle and creeping thing, and beast of the earth after his kind. And it was so. And God made the beast of the earth after his kind, and cattle after their kind, and everything that creepeth upon the earth after his kind. And God saw that it was good. And God said, let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And God blessed them. And God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply, and replenish the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb-bearing seed which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree and the which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed. To you it shall be for meat, and to every beast of the earth, and to every fowl of the air, and to everything that creepeth upon the earth, wherein there is life, I have given every green herb for meat. And it was so. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. You bow your heads with me. Father, I thank you today for this passage of scripture. I ask in Jesus' name that you allow the Holy Spirit to minister. That only you. Take that all these things consist, that they are where they are today, that they are maintained by the power. Prepared for us to the earth. Encourage each one, Lord, as we said, who is here, those who will watch this later on, allow them to realize that you desire to have a walk and a walk with them, that you desire day by day to be with them and in their lives. As we ask you these things, we praise and glorify you for the Holy Spirit, asking in Jesus' name that we will yield ourselves completely, submitting ourselves to him, that he may be pleased with our efforts today. As we ask you these things, we pray once again, Lord, honor us with your presence as we honor you with our hearing, our receiving, our obedience to the word in Jesus' name. Amen. This morning, God in this past, it is what to do this morning concerning the next name of Isaiah, verse number six, where the Bible says, "For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace." We'd like to deal this morning with the Mighty God. and that is create. I would desire that uh, Christians around in John chapter number one, verse number one is
there and four remind me of the earth it says it in the book of john chapter number one verse number one in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and the word was god the same was in the beginning with god look at verse number three all things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made i'd like to challenge Uh, we will say something uh, something to the effect that I do that all the time. And immediately, something in inside is triggered as well. Maybe, maybe or once or twice. I challenge you this morning. What he means and means what he says of the Lord, the idea that being the word of the Lord, God has said in this passage of scripture, I have created, as we just read in the first and listened to the first chapter of Genesis, I have created all things, and John chapter 1 tells us, all things are him, and this idea this morning, to grab, but I'm not sure we are Out of things, no matter how wise we are, how wise we think we are. But let's grasp a hold of the idea that God is not like us. God, him is not like us. He is faithful. We are faithless. There's no need to be need for forgiveness and think about the great grace of God what he said is lot is this I me I have created you the first chapter of Genesis verse number 26 and God said let us make man in our image after our life him in image and likeness not just in the idea that we have a form like him but rather that we are like him and I'll challenge you this morning to realize that the great failing of humanity myself included is we are not like him we would like to be like him but we are not like him he is infinite and immortal we are not we're gonna die it hasn't crossed your mind let me challenge you this morning and I hate to shake your uh, rattle your cage if this is gonna do that this morning but the Bible says it is appointed unto men to die and after that, the judgment. Every human being that has ever lived has died. Now, they may have been raised by the dead, from the dead by the Lord Jesus Christ. They may have received new life uh, through other prophets of God when they prayed for them. But they died again. Uh, when the Bible tells us about Lazarus, a story I watched again yesterday, when the Bible tells us about Lazarus, and after four days, Jesus comes forth and says, Lazarus says he comes out of the grave, and Jesus said, loose him and let him go. But if you don't, Lazarus isn't still here. He's dead, and even when the Lord raised them back to life, they continued after that. Except for Jesus. Forevermore. His own book. Well, I will evermore be. He says, I'm always going to be here because I'm raised from the dead and he's the firstborn of the firstborn of the resurrection. This passage of scripture this morning, John says in the first chapter, all things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made. I hope you grabbed a hold of the thought this morning and can get this idea in your mind. I like to make you think that he has power to create. The devil would like to make you think that he can. 
not there. There's an old dirt. You can't start there with nothing. And I challenge you this morning to recognize that God calls things into existence that are not, and in many cases, that are unseen. Let me bring a passage of scripture. In that passage where the Bible says uh, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. Later in the chapter, the Bible Holy Spirit tells us number 14 and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten of the father, full of grace and truth. He is saying the person I described in the first verse in the beginning was the word, the word was God became flesh and we know him without any desire to that God It is irrelevant. We can gainsay it. We can have fault with it. We can find fault. Bang or all those other things. I heard someone say, believe completely about it, that there was a big bang in heaven. In the first chapter of Genesis, we just now read, when the Bible says, and God said, let there be light, there is a big bang because God caused it to be when he said, let there be light. Things moved. Things came into existence. Things came into uh, uh, reality that were not there before. Let me read it. Faith is a substance of things hoped for. talking about atoms, A-T-O-M-S, molecules. And I have to tell you that I am not learned in this subject about nanoparticles about nanoparticles that scientifically they, they say that are they are constantly moving and I will tell you this morning while I have no understanding of how that works God does he created all, the, all those As we understand that the words worlds were framed God you this use this illustration before and let me challenge you within the book of Hebrews Number one, the Bible is talking about the Son when he says, He hath in these last days whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. Of God, that second person in the Trinity, the world was Jesus Christ, was there. He said, And God said, Let and God said, Let there be a great light during the day and a lesser. And God said, Let the trees and the herbs and the animals. God said, let the way after our likeness. And I challenge you this morning that by the word of God, those came in, those things came into existence. I would encourage you this morning concerning the need. The scripture makes it very 
that the word is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. When the scripture we just now heard in the book of Genesis, where the Bible says, and the spirit over the water, that place that had a void, the scripture makes it very plain that by the, by the power of God, let the waters be that word and the same power behind that word through the Holy Spirit is what Paul is saying in the book of 2 Timothy when he says all scripture is given by inspiration of God. Forty men or so or thereabouts penned words, wrote down words in 66 books over thousands of The word to write. Let me bring a thought to you this morning. In normal cases, and many of you, most of you probably have received something from me, a card or a letter or something like that, um, a Christmas card, whatever it might be, birthday card. Um, you've received uh, lessons that we have written and handed out during our Bible studies. Those Now, I will tell you, because I'm human, and because I am not nearly so dedicated as I believe the men and the women of the Bible who, who God called, I would challenge you to realize that they may find you dedicated to someone else when they were written down. Say, so, I'm trying to get to a point here, and I am. The word that was written that we call the Holy Bible, that God calls the word of God was dictated by the almighty God and men wrote it down. One passage of scripture in the book of Peter tells us as Peter is writing about these things. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved. who wrote the book of when he wrote the book of Isaiah, Jeremiah, when he wrote the book of Jeremiah, or like King David and Asaph when they wrote in the book of Psalms, they wrote those words as they were dictated by God as he told them what to write. Because of that, it is infallible. It is the word of God. And I recognize this morning there are many people in the world who do not believe that. I do not apologize for that, and I feel very sorry for them because they are not willing to understand what the Bible teaches about the Bible. Jesus Christ himself made this statement. He said, it is my desire, this is the 17th chapter of John, the last sanctify, make them holy, sanctify them through your truth, your word is true. Not in any way misunderstood by us why the devil would like to take away from us the reality of the word of God being true. Because the word of God is what sanctifies us and brings us to Almighty God. What he says is, washed you by the word of God. I have a when you read scripture to recognize I need to change something in my life. To light the confess before all, Almighty God. You can come to the Father. It's no mystery to me that the devil would like the Word of God. The word of God, because if it's not the Word of God, you can never come to the Father except through the Word. Chapter one, verse one, where the Bible says, "In the beginning." Among us, the same in chapter 14, no man comes to the Father except by me. I am the way, the truth, and the life. 
No man comes to the Father but by me. You see, the Word being made flesh in the Lord Jesus Christ, the Word of God spoken in the book of Genesis, chapter number 1, the Word of God who was God became the avenue for human beings to get to Heavenly Father God. And the Scripture makes it very plain that that Word is the only method, the only manner, the only avenue by which we can get the Almighty God. It should not surprise us then that the devil would like to gainsay the Word of God and say it's not the Word of God. I would challenge you this morning at any point in time where you begin believing this is like every other book, you are on a slippery slope in dangerous ground because if you can't believe that this is God's word written to you, then how can you believe that God said, I've so loved you that I sent my son to give you eternal life? I challenge you, the scripture makes it very plain to us that in the Old Testament, even in the Old Testament, one passage of scripture in the book of, of uh, Psalm chapter 68, verse number 11. The Bible says, the Lord gave the word. Great was the company that published it. He said, God gave the word. The people, you and I, give the word out. But God gave the word, and by the grace of God, it is the word of God. I challenge you this morning to realize that when we start doubting the word of God, we start doubting God. I would challenge you to realize, as I believe my son made a statement a couple of weeks ago, maybe last week, that in the beginning, in the garden, when the son of all animals, the serpent, came to Eve, he made the statement, it happened to you. Told you that. I'm not sure if that's totally. If you'll read the fourth chapter of Matthew and the fourth, you'll find out that the testimony of the Lord Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit in that passage says that when the enemy came to the Son of God after his baptism, when the enemy came to the Son of God, he began temptation with his flesh. I know you're hungry. I know you're weak. Make this stone bread. Make these stones bread. And I would challenge you this morning with a warning is fine. You want to get yourself in real trouble? Allow yourself tired. And the pretty soon the devil will be there knocking on your door, speaking in your ear. And it's going to sound something like this. Why would God love you? You know you. Why would God love you? What in the world do you have to offer God that God would ever be concerned about you? And I will challenge you that there's a real answer to that, that while it might be a blow to our eagle, ego, it is nevertheless No reason why God should care about us, except that he does. There's nothing we have to offer him. One passage of scripture says, if I were hungry, I wouldn't tell you. All the beasts of the field are mine, the cattle in a thousand years. I have no need of your praise. I have no need of your worship. Would he like to have? Yes, he would. Thank you. little children because they don't know much yet but I will challenge you that you and I on a pretty regular basis probably receive something from Almighty God the word the Creator and forget to say thank you we go right along our way without even saying thank you and I challenge you in this passage of scripture that what the Bible tells us is that God has
Let me read another passage of scripture, scripture to you. This is in Colossians chapter number one. It says, in whom the Lord Jesus, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions, principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him, and he is before all things, and by him all things consist. Now, there were a lot of alls in that past, those, those scriptures. And what God is really kind of telling us through the Holy Spirit and the pen of Paul in that passage of scripture is, all things that are blessed by God have been given through the Lord Jesus Christ. Through the Lord Jesus Christ. One passage of scripture in the book of Philippians chapter 4, verse number 19, the Bible says, But my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. And I want to remind you of something, because we said this a little while ago. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. That means Jesus Christ, the Word, is the one who delivers all those things to us. And if we decide we don't need the Word, we don't believe the Word, what we said is, I don't want anything from God. Because the way that God delivers them to, to us is through the Lord Jesus Christ. Use this for reminding you of it again, that great span of sin that happened when man fell in the Garden of Eden, that great span of separation from God could only be bridged by the Lord Jesus Christ on the cross when he said, if you come through me, I'll send you to the Father. If you come through me, I'll send you to the Father. You see, the Bible makes it very plain, Paul's writings to Timothy, there is one mediator between God and man, the man, Christ Jesus. One mediator means there's only one way. I'm not sure if you probably know this. You may have gone to court before and met someone who is not necessarily a judge, but a mediator between the law and you. It was his decision what happened to you. And I'll challenge you this morning when Paul makes this statement, there is one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus, the only hope we have, the man Christ Jesus, in the beginning who was the Word, who was with God, and was God, and created all things, and by him all things consist, that we talked about this morning, and rejection of the Word, rejection of the Lord Jesus Christ, is rejection of all hope. We have no hope if we don't have the Lord Jesus Christ as our blessing taking us to the Father in heaven. And I praise God, Jesus Christ in the Garden of Gethsemane, facing the greatest temptation ever, said, Father, if it's possible, I know you can do all things. If it's possible, let this cup pass from me. If any of you have watched The Passion of the Christ, I will tell you there is a very good visual of what Jesus knew ahead of time in the garden that he was facing. And he said, if it's possible, let this cup pass from me. And then right after that said, nevertheless, my marvelous love, nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. And I will challenge you this morning that the word of God has promised us and if we'll hold true to the Word of God, the Word of God has promised us that one day, being washed by the Word, we'll find avenue through Jesus Christ in the Word to be able to be with the Father. He is the mighty God. You say, Pastor, I think we're going to talk about the mighty God. He is the mighty God because everything I've said this morning about the Word about God only describes God, the mighty God. If you read that passage of scripture with me this morning, I, I ask you to refer back to it in Isaiah chapter 9, verse number 6. You, you'll get that the government will be on his child is born. I hope we do it.
Him. That we would know Him. In closing, the more you know about the Word of God, the more you're going to know about Jesus. He says to the people in his day and time, when he's walking with the scribes and Pharisees here on earth, he said, you have trust in the word, in the scriptures, but the scriptures speak of me. You see, from beginning to end, this is his story. From beginning to end, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. In the beginning was the word. This is his story. And the more you know about the word of God, the more you're going to know about the Lord Jesus Christ and the better access you're going to have to the Father so that one day you and I might live with him eternally. That's God's desire, eternally. And it starts with us believing him. One more time, book of Romans chapter 8 says this, if God is for us, who can be against us? And I'll tell you, there's an answer to that question. Be against and there's some part of you that may be rebellious to the Almighty God that is against us. And what God says is, allow the Holy Spirit to help you to bring down those strongholds of rebellion that so you might live with Almighty God. The Word who created all things, all things were created by Him. Without Him, was not anything made that was made. I hope and I know that in my feeble attempt this morning I feel like I've failed to be able to try to get this thought across to you this morning but only God creates the devil has no power to pervert it he can change it he can cause it. no power to create that's the description There seems to be no way. Pass out the communion. I praise God for the story we have of the Lord Jesus Christ and giving us his body and his blood. He says in one passage of the scripture in the book of John, except you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you have no part of me. And I can promise you this morning that the people he was talking to in that day and time did not understand, thank you, did not understand what he meant when he said, except you drink my blood. But what is this service of communion that we do, that the scripture says, this do in remembrance of me. And I challenge you to realize this, we participate in this ritual, when we take this little wafer, representative of the body of the Lord Jesus Christ, unworthily. Jesus knows that. We take it unworthy. God for the song that said, He made me worthy. He made me worthy. And times in our lives when someone would bless us with a great blessing and allow us to be a part of something that we recognize ahead of time, there's no way on our own we could ever be a part of that. He made us worthy. And I praise God for this passage of Scripture. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, Paul says in this passage of scripture, For I have received of Christ that which I gave to you. I passed it on to you. And God this morning for faithful men and women of God, like the apostles. Because the Bible says when you take this of them eat him. Scripture. Do this in remembrance of me. I'm going to ask you to stand with me this as we pray over the bread.
Father, I thank you today for this passage of scripture. As you said, the Lord Jesus Christ, talking to his disciples, said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. And Father, I thank you today that we believe and know in our heart that we have been healed by his stripes. We are healed. We have been healed by the stripes that the Lord Jesus Christ took for the healing of our bodies. I pray, Father, if there be any anybody who will be listening this morning, I pray in Jesus' name that you allow them just now to have a quickening in their heart to realize I have been healed by the stripes of Jesus Christ, not because of my merit, not because I've done anything right, but I've been healed because Jesus took stripes on his back for my body. Will you take the bread with me this morning? The Bible says, after the same manner also, he took the cup. And after he'd given thanks, he gave the cup to them. Father, I thank you so much for the pure, perfect, innocent blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Like that lamb, without blemish, as a picture of whose blood was shed that we might have forgiveness of sins. And the covering of our sins. I praise you today, Lord, because I recognize that the sinless one came for the sinful one. That the innocent one came to pay the price of the guilty. Because I've been the sinful one. I've been the guilty one. And I praise God today that you sent Jesus to take my place. Father, help us never to forget the price that you paid in the Lord Jesus Christ for our salvation in Jesus name. Will you take the cup with me this morning? Father, I pray may we never ever forget that the only sacrifice great enough for the forgiveness of sin was the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ shed at the cross. Help us, Lord, not to try to find another way. Help us, Father, when we're told there's another way. Help us to understand that by your grace, you are the way and the truth and the life. And there's no other way to the Father. I ask, Father, in Jesus' name that you will help us as we go from this place to be kept from harm and danger. I pray, Father, that you will drive that point home to our hearts this morning, that you are the El Gabor, who is, the, by the grace of God, the mighty God, the creator, and the only one who creates. Fathers, we ask you these things, we praise and glorify you for your mercy and love. Help us, Lord, to meditate on these things throughout the week, and we'll thank you as we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Shake hands, be friendly. We're glad you're with us this morning.